Hi, it's Iowa Prairie Girl. Today I'm coming to you from a Triangle Prairie. So Triangle Prairie is a section of land that is developed or is created when a railroad goes through. So 100 years ago the railroad went through here and um, then the county road was developed and the gravel roads and it's created a, a triangle section that is um, pretty useless for any other purposes. So this uh, two acres was a um, barren piece of land where the railroad stored tiles and all kinds of other um, junk and then when the county was able to uh, take it over they restored it into a prairie. Um, so in this particular prairie we're here today because there's a combination of prairie blazing star and rattlesnake master that is just absolutely beautiful in August and this this little two acre section is just alive with flowers and um, butterflies. So if you stay tuned I'm going to tell you all about rattlesnake master. see rattlesnake master is a rather unique plant that's out in the prairie. I often get pictures sent to me people, with people ask me what is this plant um, because it is so very unique. I would call it the ornamental or the accent plant of the prairie. If you were to put it into a flower arrangement it would be that really neat um, conversation piece uh, flower in an arrangement and, and so it is in, in the prairie as well. So as you can see the flower head here is, is a globe. Um, this plant is actually in the carrot, carrot or parsley family, and um, I read and I just experienced myself right now. If you were to take one of the leaves and and tear that open, it has the most distinct carrot smell ever. It's just like whoa, that really is in the carrot family. Um, the plant itself grows to be about three to five feet tall. It has a single erect stem, and from that stem. You get the flowers, and usually you can have around, they say between one to three is the average, but uh, and up to ten, I'd say more like five or six or seven is the average here in this prairie. Um, this is an established prairie with rat Rattlesnake Master. So the flower head is this button, so it's also called button uh, rattlesnake. Um, so you have this globus, is the, is the term here for this ball. Um, so it's like I said, it's in the parsley parsley family, which normally has an umbras, like that umbrella looking flower with hundreds of little flowers on it. This one has the button. And on this button, you have many, numerous, probably a hundred other little flowers on there. So there's these tiny little flowers. They're like five, they're five petals. Um, and so they, when they bloom, when it blooms, it has all these tiny little flowers that bloom on this globe. Um, they also have, each flower has a bracket, and so the bracket is um, that piece of the flower that's right underneath the flower that, that protects or braces the flower. Um, and so on the Rattlesnake Master, you have all these t uh, hundreds of little brackets forming around the little pet, uh, flowers that are on, on, the, um, on the flower head. It kind of reminds, <laughs> I just made this up, it kind of reminds you of Horton Here's a Who and how... Um, there's that little town of Whoville or whatever that is um, in Horton's Little Flower. And so that kind of reminds you of Rattlesnake Master. It's tiny, hundreds of little flowers on that globe. And then each flower has a style or two styles that stick out. And if you remember, a style is that um, little structure that uh, comes out of the flower that on top of that is the stagma. And the stagma is that platform where pollen is um, deposited. Um, so these, these flowers, although they don't really look like it, like it they're really good pollinators as well. And um, actually wasps uh, often frequent rattlesnake masters. Um, the other thing or name that the flower goes by is, or, or is similar to is a yucca. And the, the leaves, which I did mention, um, I don't know if you can see them, I don't know if you can see them here. Um, the leaf re resembles that of a yucca plant. Um, I'm just going to pick one here. So you have your leaf here. And this is one of the ones that's coming up the stem. The leaves at the base, or the basal leaves, uh, get to be about three feet um, long and um, an inch, inch and a half wide. And as they come up the stem, they get smaller. They still stay just as wide, but they're shorter. Now these leaves, you can see, um, are pretty cool. They, the Indians use them um, for weaving. You can see where they would weave. They could weave baskets, and they also weaved 
uh, shoes out of these or they line their moccasins with the leaves from the rattlesnake mask. So the flower head uh, gives off the aroma of, of a honey light and I did smell that and get a little um, part of that, that smell. Um, with the brackets and the style sticking out, it does give you like a thistle-like appearance, although it's, it's not, not really hard or prickly when you touch it, but it does uh, remind people of a thistle. And the same thing with the leaves. The leaves have soft um, uh, prickles along the edges of them, but those also are not real sharp. All right, so Rattlesnake Master. It likes full sun. It can bloom from May to September. We're here in August. Um, and it has a really, really long root system. It's uh, a drought resistant plant. Now the root is what makes uh, this plant so unique or what gives it its name. So Rattlesnake Master. Um, the root by the Indians would be chewed and then they would make, take that substance and spit it in their hands and then they would handle rattlesnakes during ceremonial dancing. Um, and so that's what gives you the name Rattlesnake Master. So there's the belief that the sap from the root will um, not only prevent um, rattlesnakes from biting you, but it also is a cure if you do get bitten. There's also the belief that if you just hold or bite a root in your mouth, it will prevent um, a rattlesnake from, from biting you or, or to cure you from a rattlesnake bite. Uh, I also read that if you, even if you just plant Rattlesnake Master near the door to your um, uh, abode or your house, that will also prevent uh, snakes from bothering you. Um, it's actually the root then that has all the medicinal purposes. The root is also used for whooping cross, uh, nosebleeds, venereal diseases. Um, what else? There's something else that was important. Rattlesnake bites, obviously. Um, so the root has a lot of medicinal purposes or, or so-called medicinal purposes. One last thing about Rattlesnake Master is it seems like we keep learning about the importance of our prairie plants and we've all learned about um, uh, milkweed and how important the milkweed is for, um, for the monarch bu butterflies. Rattlesnake Master is also important for a plant. There is an actual moth called the Rattlesnake Moth, Rattlesnake Master Moth that only survives with the Rattlesnake Master plant. And th this plant, although it seems very um, prevalent here in um, North Iowa, there's actually is threatened in other states. Um, I know Minnesota is on, on the threatened list. So Rattlesnake Master is important to a particular moth, um, and they've only found this moth now in five states, not here in Iowa, um, but in states uh, south of Iowa here, they're monitoring um, rattlesnake master and the rattlesnake master moth that only um, can complete its uh, life cycle by um, uh, the caterpillar um, burrowing into the stem and into the root of this plant. Well that's all I know about the rattlesnake master. Uh, this is Iowa Prairie Girl encouraging you to get out and explore the prairies around your place or those wild places around your place. Take your kids out, take your family out, um, go out for a picnic or go out for a hike, get outside. Um, please uh, like my YouTube channel, subscribe, share it all you want, um, and please stay tuned for our next videos, for my next video. This is Rattle. <laughs> this is Iowa Prairie Girl signing off.